all want to be financially independent. We all want to have that financial freedom and we want to be free to do whatever we want to do in life, like have a vacation whenever we want or spend time with our family whenever we need to. But I know it's sometimes hard and we all have responsibilities and we need to provide for ourselves. That's why we need to work. And for me, work is a blessing. However, if given the opportunity to start your own business, I know we all want to have that freedom to be able to do whatever we want. And that's why a lot of us dream of having their own business. In today's vlog, I'll be discussing about self-doubt. And I think all of the entrepreneurs who have their own business, who is starting their own business just now, has gone through or is going through a period of self-doubt. So continue to watch this video and I hope you will get inspired and learn something from it. Before we start, I want to illustrate this situation with you through a story that is fictional. The characters in my story are fictional, but I'm sure you'll be able to relate. So Emma is a senior accountant in a well-established company and she has been working there for eight years. She has a good package. However, she have always wanted to be a creative baker. She always wanted to have her own bakery because she likes creating and baking cakes for special occasions. So one day she decided to quit and she took her separation pay and, and she decided to open her own bakery. She got her license, she rented a small shop and she hired a couple of employees to help her with the business. She got a few orders at first, but however, she realized that business is a bit slow and it's not as what she has expected. And then self-doubt started to creep in and she was now having second thoughts if she had made the right decision. I think most of you businessmen and businesswomen out there, especially those who are just starting up or in the beginning stage of the business, a lot of us have gone through this self-doubt phase that we doubt ourselves if we made the right decision of quitting our jobs and opening a business. I have shared my story previously when I quit my high paying job. I was the area visual manager of a company and I quit my job to finally focus on photography full time in 2014. Of course, there was a stage. I think the first couple of years was the most difficult stage for me after quitting the job. This, then I had like self-doubt creep in and I was thinking if I made the right decision. So today I'm going to share with you the, my tips on how you can eliminate self-doubt or how you can conquer this fear and achieve your goals for your business and in life. The first step for you to overcome self-doubt is for you to list down your strengths. I'm sure the reason you opened the business and I'm sure the reason you initially had the guts to do it was you believed in yourself and you believe you have this inner strength. Like for example, for Emma, her strength was with numbers because she was an accountant. And for me, when I started opening the business, my strength was in photography and I had strength in planning. I write down my plans and I write down my goals and I always make a plan A and a plan B. So that was my strength. So that is the first thing that you should do is list down your strengths to boost your confidence. My second step is for you to list down your weaknesses. As soon as you list down your weaknesses, you'll be able to review them and say like, this is my weakness and what possible solutions for you to eliminate those weakness. For example, Emma in our story had, had self-doubt because she was not a good marketer. She did not have any marketing background, so she was afraid that she is not advertising her business properly. So that was one of her weaknesses that has been affecting her business. The third step is for you to list actionable goals for you to eliminate those weaknesses. It's a bit overwhelming when you say, you need to improve in marketing because it's so general and it's quite a big feat trying to improve in marketing when you don't have any marketing background. But when you try to break it down to smaller actionable goals, then it's less overwhelming. So for Emma, she cannot get a marketing agency right now because she's in the startup stage. Let's say she doesn't have any more budget for it for the first year. Maybe in the later stage of her business, she might, but right now she has to do everything by herself. She has to create actionable goals for her to achieve her goals for her business. So let's say she wanted to improve her social media marketing. The best way for you to start creating actionable goals whenever you have this big frog to swallow, try working backwards. So write on your big 
big goal and then try to work backwards so if you have this target in mind like a you need to achieve x amount of sales then you need more clients and then working backwards if you need more clients that means people need to know your brand more so brand awareness is very important then you go backwards and then you say who are then my clients who will be the people buying from me then you work backwards once you identified your audience then you identify which platform do they normally use like for example the younger generation will use instagram and tiktok you know that your target audience is on that platform so then you need to go on that platform and then create content for those platforms so then now that you know the platform that you're on that you want to get on you want to create the content for that but Emma is not a professional photographer and videographer. She can either get a professional photographer or videographer for those platforms or she needs to learn how to do mobile photography or how to do basic product shots using the phone or maybe get her own camera and then attend workshops that will teach her how to create content for her business. Then she can learn about captions and the hashtags. So those are the actual steps that she needs to do. So she needs to schedule, create a schedule for this week. On Monday, I need to learn about hashtags and captions. And on Tuesday, I will attend this photography workshop or maybe I will watch a Skillshare video on how to take good photos using the phone. And then on Wednesday, she will create a calendar for her monthly post because you need to create a calendar for you to be able to effectively promote your brand on those platforms you need to create a calendar so your content is not just redundant and you can attract the audience and it's good for audience retention that they will come back and then they will see something interesting it's not just posting a photo it's social media is not like that anymore posting a photo without a, a relevant caption without getting audience attention it's difficult nowadays to compete because there's so much noise and you have to stand out from that noise to for you to be able to get the client that you need or the audience that you are targeting so that falls under marketing aspect like but for me when i was starting the business i had self-doubt i had good planning but i did not have a sense of accounting so I had to teach myself Excel and I had to teach myself numbers. So it was just so basic from listing down your expenses and then planning your future expenses. It was a big learning curve for me. I had to learn those numbers. Then I had to plan for the future and I did not have any bookkeeping or accounting knowledge. So far, so good. Now I have a part-time accountant who does our book for our VAT and then I have my secretary MJ who I really really love that she's now doing the filing for me she's now helping me with the bookkeeping although I still do the financial planning for the future and I still do majority of the accounting and the planning the fourth step is for you to create a progress chart it's a way for you to reward yourself once you achieve your smaller actionable goals because once you have listed down your goals it's for you to eliminate self-doubt for you to reward yourself and see the progress that you have done and then you'll feel more confident in your decisions that you've been making and the steps that you've been taking because you're progressing towards your goals and then you'll feel more confident in making decisions in the future so create a progress chart list down the goals that you initially wanted to achieve and then take off those goals so you'll feel more confident later on in decision making and trying to achieve the bigger goals once you achieve those goals reward yourself also with with either Starbucks coffee or a movie on Netflix binge watch relax give yourself a break and or go get a massage especially if you have knocked off or have achieved bigger goals number five is for you to be kind to yourself sometimes we can be tough on ourselves especially when we fail on something we feel so bad and that's when the self-doubt sinks in these are the times that you say like am I still on the right path should I still do this I think I made the wrong decision so failure will make you really think that you have failed in your goals and you have failed in life and then that is when self-doubt will like kick you on the face and kick you hard be kind to yourself failure is part of life there is no successful business that have not failed before they achieved success think of it like this failure is part of life and it's for us to learn and for us to get more experience and more knowledge on things i have failed so many times 
especially in business i have failed in minor stuff and major stuff our processes now develop from prior failures i have failed in hiring before i have failed in how i manage people i have failed in choosing suppliers so you can fail several times most important thing is for you to be kind to yourself forgive yourself for those failures and think of it as a stepping stone and for you to get up and get moving and it's another day and life is like that you have to try again try and try again till you till you succeed number six so i think it's something similar to number five when you're starting a business it's really important to be kind to yourself to be not so tough on yourself i especially i think most entrepreneurs are high achievers and they're very competitive and they have really high dreams and they want to achieve them but sometimes you just really have to be kind to yourself that there are some things that you cannot do in a by yourself and there's some things you are really good at and some things that you need a lot of training for or you don't or even you don't have the talent to do those stuff and then that's the time you need to hire people to help you so be kind to yourself do not compare never compare yourself to others why this business succeeded faster than i did i was in the business for three years and they just started and they're very successful they're very well known i have the same thing i had insecurities when i tried to to compare my myself when i try to compare my business to others that is the time i feel insecure and again self-doubt starts to creep in so that's why it's not it's very important for you not to compare yourself to others it's very important also which is my number seven step or number seven tip is for you to make conscious effort to eliminate self-doubt you can do this using positive affirmations wake up and say in the morning that this is going to be a good day I'm going to achieve my goals today. I am going to close a lot of business deals today. I'm going to meet new clients today and I'm going to do business with them. And today I'm going to be confident and I'm going to win. So those are positive affirmations that you can tell yourself every day when you wake up in the morning or when you look at yourself in the mirror and tell this to yourself for you to eliminate self-doubt. My eighth step is for you to choose your support system wisely. I have said this many times before that it's very important that you choose the people you hang out with. When you want to be successful in life or you want to be successful in business, you have to have a strong support system. Surround yourself with people that will support you that will understand you and that will encourage you but of course you don't want to have yes people only yes people around you you want people who will give you constructive feedback people you will learn from and people who are like-minded and who are also seeking to develop themselves and they are also seeking success so you can help and build each other up so this is very important for you to eliminate self-doubt is for you to surround yourself with people who will lift you up and give you direction and help you focus on your direction choose your support system wisely that's my eighth tip and my ninth tip is from my personal experience as a christian business owner i eliminate my self-doubt using this one powerful tool it's called the prayer because i have faith in god that i know that he will be able to sustain me and support me in all my endeavors and every morning i always try to make sure to spend time in devotion and prayer and of course the other steps are very important to me but this one tool that i use is the power of prayer because it has supported me ever since i had periods of self-doubt i had periods of of giving up but because of my faith in god because of my belief that my god will sustain me it has helped me achieve more it has helped me eliminate the fear the self-doubt even sometimes i don't i have self-doubt but i never doubt what god can do for my business or in my life jeremiah 29 verse 11 has been one of my favorite verses it's one of the first that i always go to whenever i feel down and whenever i'm facing self-doubt so it says here that for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord Plan plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future it's very comforting to know for me as a christian business person that my god will will sustain me and will help me prosper and will help me achieve the goals that i want as long as it is according to his will so those are the my tips for you to eliminate self-doubt if you're a business person or if you're planning to start your own business and you're you're having major self-doubt and you're fearing that you will not be able to do the things that you dreamed of it has been your dream ever since but you're 
not sure if it's right for you try these steps let's review them first list down your strengths second list down your weaknesses and how you can solve them then create actionable goals for you to overcome your weaknesses number four Create a progress chart for you to gain more confidence and to, for you to reward yourself and feel good about your achievements. Number five is be kind to yourself and accept failures and get over them. And number six is never compare yourself to others. Number seven is make conscious effort to eliminate self-doubt using positive affirmations. Number eight is choose a support system wisely and number nine is pray i hope you got inspired today and i hope you will get over your self-doubt and go for your dreams achieve them and if you like this video make sure you subscribe and hit the like button below and see you on my next vlog thank you